In this video, I'll give you an overview of OpenSprinkler firmware 2.2.0. This firmware has introduced a number of new features, including support for remote access through the OpenThings Cloud or OTC connection, support for sequential groups for managing zones, setting a start date and end date for each program, pause zones, shift zones forward when manually stopping a zone, and support for more flexible master zone on and off adjustment times. The content of this video largely follows the OpenSprinkler firmware 2.2.0 user menu. So for details, please refer to the user menu. If you haven't configured Wi-Fi or wired ethernet for your OpenSprinkler, Please follow our previous videos which explain how to set up Wi-Fi and wired Ethernet for your controller. Here we assume your OpenSprinkler is already connected to your Wi-Fi or wired network. You can always click the first push button B1 to find its current IP address and port number. Open a web browser and type in the IP address. Or if you use the OpenSprinkler mobile app, you can add a controller by typing in a descriptive name, its IP address, and port number. The user interface is the same whether you use the mobile app or use a web browser directly. The first time you access the controller, you will see the login screen. The default device password is open door. At the home screen, you will see a list of zones, the name, current status, and group ID of each zone, the current weather, watering level in percentage, and at the bottom is the system status bar. In this video, I'll use the term zone and station interchangeably. They both mean the same thing. Click the icon at the top left corner, or at the home page, swipe left to right. This will open the sidebar. Here you can export your current configurations to a file. This is useful when you need to back up your configurations for firmware upgrade, or file a support ticket. Similarly, you can import a save the configuration from a previously saved file. The About page shows your hardware version, firmware version, and app version. The Localization button allows you to choose any of the supported languages for the user interface. These translations are completed by a crowdsourcing. On the sidebar, you can also disable controller operation and re-enable its operation. You can change the device password, reboot the controller, or check system diagnostics. The system diagnostics contains useful information such as when was the last time the controller rebooted, what was the reason of the reboot. It also contains data used for weather adjustment calculation, which I will explain later in this video. At the home page, if you click the name of a zone, a timer dialog pops up. Here you can manually turn on a zone for a specified amount of time, for example to do an ad hoc testing of the zone. When a zone is running, its status is shown as a green circle, and the timer here counts down the remaining runtime of the zone. You can schedule multiple zones, in which case the controller will put them in a queue, so any zone that's scheduled to run but not turned on yet is shown with a yellow circle and with the expected start time displayed underneath the zone name. In addition to running zones sequentially, OpenSprinkler firmware allows you to run zones concurrently or simultaneously by making use of the sequential group feature. Next, click the gears icon next to a zone. This will open the zone attribute dialog. Here you can customize the name of each zone, choose its attribute flags, such as should this zone be affected by rain delay, by sensors, and should it activate master zones if any master zone is configured. In the Advanced tab, you can assign the zone to one of the four sequential groups labeled A, B, C, and D, or assign it to the parallel group P. The idea of sequential group is that zones belonging to the same sequential group will be automatically serialized, which means only one zone in this group can, can run at any given time. However, if two zones belong to different groups, they can run simultaneously. Let me show an example. Here, zone 3 and 4 both belong to group A. 
So if I turn them on now, say for five minutes each, they will be serialized. So zone four will run after zone three stops running. Now zones five and six belong to group B. If I turn them on now, also for five minutes each, they will be serialized with respect to each other, but they will run alongside with zones three and four, since A and B are two different groups. In addition, if a zone is in the parallel group, it can run at any time with any other zone, because zones in the parallel group will not be serialized at all. So the concept of sequential group can be useful in applications where you may have zones on separate water lines. Those connected to the same line, you may want to serialize them, and those connected to on different water lines can run at the same time. If a zone is currently running or waiting to run, you can stop it from running by clicking on the zone and confirm. In addition, if the runtime queue has other zones in the same sequential group, a checkbox will be available which allows you to choose whether to shift up the remaining zones in the same sequential group. When this checkbox is selected, the current zone will stop and the next zone in the same sequential group will start running immediately, instead of waiting for its originally scheduled start time. In the Advanced tab, another attribute is the station type. By default, it's standard station, which means a regular sprinkler station. But there are also a few special types you can choose. An RF zone allows you to use open sprinkler to switch radio frequency devices, such as RF wireless power sockets. A remote station allows you to use one open sprinkler as a master controller that sends commands to other open sprinklers to turn on or off their zones. This is useful if your zones are pretty far apart and it's difficult to lay out wires to a central location. In that case, you can set up multiple open sprinklers and designate one of them as a master controller, which is used to manage zones on the other controllers. There's also the GPIO zone and the HTTP zone. For details of these types, please check the Open Sprinkler firmware user manual. At the home page, click the lower right corner icon to open the main menu. Here you can change rain delay. Rain delay is a period of time when all programs and zones will stop running and will not resume. The status bar at the bottom shows when the rain delay will be over. To cancel an existing rain delay, just click on the status bar and confirm, or go back to the main menu and set a rain delay duration of zero. If you want to pause programs and station runs instead of simply stopping them, you can use the pause stations runs button. This will trigger a pause where existing zones will stop running and will resume after the pause timer counts down to zero. The start times of all zones, including those waiting to run, will be adjusted accordingly. If a program start time falls during the pause time, the program will also be queued and postponed until the pause is over. During a pause, the footer will display the status and countdown timer. You can cancel an existing pause by clicking on the footer or by going to Menu, Resume Station Runs. At the main menu, you can also stop all zones immediately, show disabled zones, and view log data. Next, I will explain edit options. Go to menu, edit options. Here, the options are grouped into several categories. In the system settings, you can set your location, such as by using your zip code, your street address, or let the map automatically detect your location. The location setting is important because Open Sprinkler uses the location to automatically detect your time zone and retrieve weather adjustment data. If you want to manually set your time zone, you need to first clear out the location, then the time zone box will become editable. In the system settings, you can also choose to enable or disable logging, use metric or imperial units, or whether to order stations at the home page by their group IDs. Next, configure master settings. A master zone is also known as a pump zone. 
it turns on automatically with other zones. OpenSprinkler uses software-defined master zones, so any zone can be assigned as a master zone. This firmware supports up to two independent master zones. Once the master zone is defined, on the home page they will show up with the label M. For each zone that's not a master zone, you can go to the zone attributes to set whether this zone activates one or both the master zones. When selected, every time this zone is turned on, the associated master zone will also turn on automatically. Now back to the master settings. You can also fine tune the exact time the master zone activates by using the on and off adjustment times. This firmware allows more flexible adjustment times that can range from negative 600 seconds or negative 10 minutes to positive 10 minutes. For example, a master on adjustment of 10 seconds means the master zone will turn on 10 seconds after a zone opens. And an on adjustment of negative 15 seconds means it will turn on 15 seconds ahead of a zone. Similarly, a master off adjustment of 15 seconds means the master zone will turn off 15 seconds after a zone closes, and an off adjustment of negative 30 seconds means it will turn off 30 seconds before a zone closes. Next, station handling. Here you can choose the number of zones. For OpenSprinkler 3, it can detect the number of available zones which is shown here. Regardless, you still need to manually set the number of zones. Because OpenSprinkler supports special zone types such as remote zone, RF zone, you can enable more zones than there are physically. The station delay parameter defines the gap between two sequential zones. This can range from negative 600 seconds to positive 600 seconds with a precision of 5 seconds. For example, a 60 second station delay means two consecutive zones in the same sequential group will be separated by 60 seconds. So the next zone will turn on 60 seconds after the previous one has stopped. This is useful if you use a pump that needs time to refill water before watering the next zone. Similarly, a negative 30 seconds station delay means the next zone will turn on 30 seconds before the previous zone stops. This is sometimes useful for reducing water hammering issues. Next, weather and sensors. Here you can choose different weather adjustment methods. The default is manual adjustment, where you can set the watering percentage manually. When a watering program uses weather adjustment, the water time for each zone will be multiplied by this watering percentage. This firmware also supports a monthly adjustment method, where you can set a fixed watering percentage for each month individually. The Zimmerman and ETO methods automatically calculates the watering percentage based on your location's weather data and the parameters of each method, respectively. You can check the sidebar, System Diagnostics, to find out weather data details and error information if there is any. For details on how these algorithms work, please refer to the support article at support.opensprinkler.com. OpenSprinkler 3 supports two independent sensors. A sensor should be connected between the corresponding sensor terminal and the ground terminal. The signal from a sensor can be used to stop zones from running, and each zone can be individually set to ignore a sensor or not. The supported sensor types include a rain sensor, soil sensor, and a switch or button used to trigger a program to run. Only digital sensors that output binary signals are supported. Analog sensors are not supported at the moment. For rain and soil sensors, you can choose whether each sensor is normally open or closed, and set delayed on and off times to filter out false triggerings and improve reliability. In addition, 
Sensor 1 supports the flow sensor type with flow pulse rate as an optional parameter. For details about these sensors, please refer to the firmware user menu. In the LCD screen section, you can set the idle brightness of the LCD. This can help increase the LCD's lifespan. After about 20 seconds of inactivity, the LCD will lower its brightness. If you set the idle brightness to zero, it will turn off completely when idling. Click any button on the controller will activate the LCD screen again. In the advanced section, you can change the HTTP port, set the voltage boost time for DC powered open sprinkler, customize the NTP timesync server, and toggle between DHCP or static IP. At the integration section, you can configure OpenThings Cloud or OTC to enable remote access. In contrast to previous firmwares, where remote access required port forwarding on your router, this firmware is the first to allow remote access via OTC cloud server, so there's no need to set up port forwarding anymore. Here are the steps to configure OTC. First, if you don't already have an account at opensprinkler.com, please go to opensprinkler.com, my account, and create an account there. Next, go to openthings.io and use your sprinkler.com username and password to log in. Once in, you should see a link to my OpenThings OTC devices on the left. Click on that link, type in a descriptive name, select OpenSprinkler as the device type, then add new device. This will create an OTC token, which is 32 characters long. Copy this token and go back to your OpenSprinkler settings. Click OTC, tap to configure, click enable, and paste your token there. Then submit. And also submit the options changes. You need to reboot your OpenSprinkler for this to take effect. After the controller reboots, in about 20 to 30 seconds or so, it should complete OTC connection. You can confirm this by going to System Diagnostics and check the OpenThings Cloud status. If it says connected, you're all set. With OTC connection enabled, you can remotely access the controller by using this OTC token. The OpenSprinkler mobile app now supports adding a device by its OTC token. You can also open a browser window and use the following link to directly access the controller in the browser. When OTC is enabled, local access via the controller's IP address is also still available. Back to the integration section, you can configure MQTT and or IFTTT to receive events or notifications. Here you can configure the MQTT server name, port number, and authentication data if required. You can also configure IFTTT to receive notifications on selected events. For details of the integrations, please refer to the user menu. At the main menu, click Edit Programs. Here you can create a new program, modify, delete, or duplicate an existing program, and reorder the programs in the list. To create a new program, click the Add button on the top right. Type in the program name here. Check Use Weather Adjustment if you want the watering percentage calculated by the weather algorithm to be applied to this program. Next, if needed, you can enable date range to set a start date and an end date for the program. By default, the date range is the entire year, but you can set a program to run, for example, from May the 14th to October the 1st, or you can set the program to run from October the 15th to March the 20th of the next year. The next parameter is the start time. This is the first time that the program should run during a day. Additional start times will appear shortly. You can also set the start time as the sunrise time or sunset time plus a offset.
The program type can be weekly or interval. In a weekly program, you can choose which days of a week the program runs. In an interval program, you can set the program to run, say, every 14 days as the interval and starting in two days. Additionally, you can set an odd or even day restriction, so the program only runs on odd number days of a month or even number days of a month. The next section is station run times. For each station, you can set its water time in precision of one second. The maximum water time is 18 hours. If you need a station to run longer than 18 hours, you can use the repeating feature below or create another program. The station's water time can also be sunrise to sunset time or sunset to sunrise time of the next day. Beyond the first to start time, you can set additional start times either as a repeating type or as a fixed type. The repeating type is suitable if additional start times are on a regular interval. Say you want the program to repeat every three hours for four times. Now including the first start time, the program will run a total of five times at 8 a.m., 11 a.m., 2 p.m., 5 p.m., and 8 p.m. respectively. As another example, you can set the program to repeat every 15 minutes for 35 times. If your additional start times are not on a regular interval, you can switch to a fixed type and add up to three arbitrary start times. When you are done editing the program, click Save New Program to finish. Because this firmware supports a fairly large number of programs, in order to understand how the programs will run throughout a day, you can check the Program Preview feature. This is a quite useful tool to visualize the program execution pattern. The program preview is done by using a software simulation of the firmware scheduler algorithm, and it obeys most settings such as each station's sequential group, station delay time, master activation, and on-off adjustment times. For example, stations in the same sequential group are serialized, and in different groups can run alongside each other. If you notice any mistake, you can click on a colored block here, and it will lead you back to the corresponding program so you can continue editing it. The Run Once program is a quick way to set a one-time use program. Here you can load a test program, which runs each zone for one minute. You can load the station run times from any existing program you have, or you can manually set each station's run time to start a quick program. If you want to create an ad hoc program that you manually run from time to time, but you don't want it to be on a preset schedule, then you can create a program, check off the enable flag, so that the program is disabled normally. Then every time you want to run the program manually, just go to this program, scroll down to the bottom, and click Run This Program. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.